Despite some of the outliers, I actually think weapon balance in Battlebit is done relatively well. Most weapons in the game feel like they have a sense of purpose oh, and bring a relatively unique role to the game's arsenal, which is no small feat given Battlebit's simplistic looks and delivery style. But there are some outliers on both ends of the spectrum. Some are too good and some are truly terrible. G'day there once again viewers, your mate Kamikaze78 here and today I want to talk about a group of the worst guns in Battlebit Remastered right now the DMR category. So I'll be real folks, this is the video that I've been wanting to do for a while now. DMRs have long been in a very lacking spot in the grand scheme of the game's balance and this isn't something that's necessarily new here. But if I'm being honest, I've not been looking forward to making this video and let me tell you, collecting the gameplay for this one was nothing short of a frustrating experience. Now sure, as you'll see in the background gameplay, I had some good moments here, but far out, it was very rare for me to find myself in a position where I thought to myself, ah yes, this DMR is the best weapon for the job right now. And that statement in of itself very much sets us off on the right direction for the rest of this video here today. I think it's a fair assessment to say that DMRs are designed to fit in this weird middle ground between ARs and sniper rifles. You know, a more forgiving answer to long range threats as opposed to the one shot, one kill precision that a sniper rifle requires, but in turn incapable of scoring that one shot kill with a headshot, which is a very nice option to have as far as flexibility is concerned and gives players who are a little bit less comfortable with the high stakes risk of a sniper rifle the option to, you know, theoretically compete at range. Obviously, there's always going to be a point where snipers are going to become far more effective and deadly in the hands of a skilled shooter, but that comes naturally with the sliding scale of skill flaws and skill ceilings and how powerful a weapon should be in turn. And look, to put credit where credit is due, in theory, when you take a look at them in isolation, the DMRs in the game actually do a great job at doing that. The M110 and the MK20 in particular, both sport heftier damage models that sees them effectively scoring three to four shot kills against against most armored targets in the game, even at longer ranges. And that extends to two shot headshot kills against most targets, unless you're dealing with the, you know, heaviest of body armors. The M110 and the MK20 tend to carry this potency out in excess of 300 meters, which is obviously more potency than the assault rifles of the game carry, which is a win for the DMRs as well. Again, on paper, we're looking at some pretty attractive stats here, but this is where we start to run into our first couple of problems here as well. The ranges in which the DMRs start to feel like they effectively outperform the ARs in the game is also the range in which they naturally start to compete with or against the likes of sniper rifles, which as I'm sure we can all agree are one shot killing machines that are far more efficient and knocking down targets in quick succession if you well know how to aim. The issue that we have here is that assault rifles, rightfully so, are typically incredibly effective out to around 100 meters in full auto mode or bursting with the right amount of recoil control. Should you decide to throw the likes of the AK-15, the Fowl or the Scar into semi-auto firing mode, and for clarification's sake, those being all of the heavier hitting ARs that tend to knock on the doorstep of damage numbers featured by the DMRs, you can start dropping targets at even further distances with the right assault rifles and the right trigger fingers. Now, keep those comparisons in mind because we're going to come back to those as examples in a few moments here. So the point being here is that assault rifles through their effective ranges being quite long in battle bits, push our DMR categories sort of quote unquote competitive range out by a significant amount, which in turn is likely to see DMRs compete in the domains where sniper rifles are going to be rather dominant. The problem with that though is that it's really next to impossible to compete with DMRs because of the amount of time that you realistically need to be standing stationary to get the required shots down range and onto target, and that's assuming the best case scenario of perfect accuracy and follow-up shots. With a sniper rifle, it's one shot, target down, get back in cover, rinse and repeat. With a DMR, you need multiple successive accurate shots. That means recentering your crosshair after dealing with the extensive recoils and correcting for any issues that may have arose as a result of your shots. On that recoil front for a second there as well, most of the DMRs sport some of the heaviest vertical recoils in the game. And further to that, the M110 in particular also sports a 1.4 times first shot multiplier, which means that every time you fire the weapon, you are greeted by an amplification of 1.4 times to the recoil on top of its base stats. And that's rough to deal with when you're literally racing against the clock 
to score multiple quick successive shots on a target downrange. And again, even if you aren't explicitly engaging an enemy sniper, it leaves you tunnel visioned on a certain target for a far longer period of time and therefore is likely to leave you vulnerable to sniper fire because you're standing basically dead still. And all of this completely ignores the fact, my friends, that DMRs also don't sport perfect accuracy ratings. Sure, their accuracies are above average here, but it's not perfect. Every shot has a chance of slowly drifting off of your target crosshair, which means that at long range, even if a round veers by a small percentage, a couple of degrees, a couple of pixels even, it's going to lead to a clear miss at those extended ranges over time. So it's safe to say that DMRs feel like a fish out of water in the long range domain. The natural answer is to reel that range in. At closer distances, the recoil and the imperfect accuracy will feel less harsh, so naturally it's the answer. But as soon as we start to do that, folks, we are greeted by those weapons in the AR category like the Scar and the Foul that all sport, comparatively, tiny recoil kicks, which make for much faster follow-up shots. But on top of that, the damage model of these ARs doesn't actually put them that far off from the DMRs in such ranges as far as potency is concerned. For example, the SCAR's default damage of 42 means that it can match the three-shot kill potential of the MK20 and the M110 against a target wearing normal body armor all the way out to 159 meters. Same applies to the two-shot against headshots and targets wearing normal helmets. So yes, on paper, the M110 and the MK20 have more damage, this is true. But in actuality, the heavier hitting ARs, all of them with the addition of the heavy or the long barrel, basically net similar to same results with less recoil getting in the way. And with the benefit of having full auto fire as needed, there's a lot more utility available to you there as well. Not to mention that if you get yourself to a scuffle with an assault rifle and you start trading fire while using a DMR, you need to deal with any of the aim punch that hits you, which may make your shots even more unwieldy. Not great. So overall, it feels pretty senseless to run a DMR competitively at this point. For a flavor pick and to try something different every once in a while, it's something that you can do, but that's about it. Now, obviously I've talked a lot about the MK20 and the M110 here today, but what about the likes of the MK14 EBR with its full auto capacity, and even, let's just say, the SVD with its slightly faster firing rate of fire? Guys, this weapon in particular, that being the MK14 EBR, is essentially a slower firing AK-15 with a 14 round magazine. That's 10 rounds less than what the AK-15 has in comparison here, which in a game like Battlebit, with hundreds of players on the same server, you need all of the amount of rounds you can get. To speak time to kill for a second here, we are talking a 300 millisecond time to kill as the best case scenario with the MK14 thanks to its slower rate of fire. If you come across someone using an Exo armor set while using the MK14, that's a 600 millisecond time to kill with a five shot bullet to kill threshold. That's absolutely fucking useless. There is zero zilch, not a reason to use the MK14 EBR over the AK-15 right now. And again, with the SVD sort of sporting a faster fire rate in semi-auto, but a lower damage model platform as to what it is, I still kind of feel like I'd rather just run an assault rifle for the same deal, or even an SMG per se. It just doesn't feel like it has the flexibility or the usability to really make it worth its while. So what do we do about all this, guys? Obviously, the DMRs need some attention, and how do we fix it? The problem with balancing DMRs, and it's something that we've seen in plenty of first-person shooter games in the past, is that you need to walk a very fine line in the balance department because you do risk making DMRs an extremely overpowered kind of weapon, especially in a game like this where the average engagement distances can be quite long at times. Again, we've all seen examples in the past with other games of DMRs just being completely obstructive of the gameplay flow just due to how powerful they are. The DMR-14 in Black Ops Cold War, and therefore its integration into Warzone was a perfect example, and some of the DMRs in Planet Side were pretty egregious to deal with as well. So again, if you overtune them, you run the risk of creating a very frustrating gameplay loop. To get the ball rolling and to at least start to ease onto the right path, my recommended changes would be looking at reducing the recoil per shot or reducing the recoil recovery time of these weapons and also making them 100% accurate and getting rid of any kind of potential inaccuracies that may occur with the weapon. I feel like if you're required to make multiple consistent shots, sometimes against moving targets with these things, then you shouldn't have RNG accuracy getting in the way of that. It's not an order 
automatic weapon. It's entirely down to crosshair placement and user aim. I think to introduce an element of RNG into the mix with these kinds of weapons is not the right way to balance them. But that is just me. And as we wrap up today's video, guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the DMRs in Battlebit Remastered currently. Do you think they also need some love and some balancing in the game, or do you think I am talking out my ass and need to shut up immediately? Let me know down below, guys. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to backhand the like button as it does go a long way to supporting the channel. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for more first-person shooter content coming up really soon. Once again, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Peace out, and I will see you guys all in the next one. Take care, guys. Have a good one.